Hi everyone and welcome to my jungle leasing guide. This guide is going to really focus on the basics of how I jungle lease in and the different routes that maximize its potential. I'm also going to assume that viewers already have prior knowledge of these skills. If you don't, then I would recommend you stop watching this video and go watch Freak's Champion Spotlight because I'm sure most of you don't want to watch me go through each and every one of these skills. Now if you are here to improve your jungle lease in, or even just to get a different insight on how others jungle him, then I would encourage you to continue watching and hopefully you'll learn something new. Let's start off with his runes. Typically, I go full armor penetration marks, flat armor seals, magic resist for level glyphs, and flat attack damage quints. Attack speed marks are not needed on Lee because of its passive speed buff. Armor seals are just the best for jungling, and glyphs can be interchanged with flat magic resist or the two types of cooldown reduction glyphs depending on your personal preferences. Lastly, flat attack damage quints can be interchanged with armor penetration or flat armor, also depending on your preferences. For masteries, I go 2190, ignoring deadliness and lethality, focusing on bladed armor in the defense section. The 9 points in defensive masteries makes me tankier in the jungle and therefore makes me more durable for ganks. However, I find that 2109 works just as well, giving more movement speed, increased red duration, and extra energy along with flash cooldown reduction. If you find that your team is lacking in tank or even an off tank, then going 9210 works best, grabbing cooldown reduction simply because Lee works so well with CDR and Indomitable combined with Summoner's Resolve over Honor Guard because of the early game advantage it gives Lee, and Lee's early game is crucial to his success later on. For Summoner spells, I run either Exhaust Smite or Flash Smite. Exhaust makes your gank stronger and allows you to cripple one of your enemies in teamfights for 2.5 seconds while Flash gives you even more utility and allows you to escape situations where you can't jump to an allied unit. Smite is just an absolute necessity for all junglers. Once you have your Mastery's runes and summoners set, we need to decide on a jungle route and an item build order. This is where the loading screen comes in. Observe who the opposing jungler is. If the enemy jungler is blue dependent, it's not a bad idea to start at the enemy red. If the enemy jungler is red dependent, start at your own red and then immediately move on to take the enemy blue. Let me show some clips to demonstrate. In this clip, I see that the enemy jungler is Skarner, who is heavily blue dependent. Therefore, I'm going to go over to his red first and counter jungle him in an attempt to slow him down, conveniently opening up opportunities for me to gank the nearby top or bottom lane that is not by my red side. This is important because in higher ELO games, most people won't be expecting a gank from Lee from his blue side. Furthermore, Skarner will not have red to gank lanes, and I can take my own red to extend the buff duration. In this next clip, my enemy jungler is actually another Lee Sin, which may happen from time to time in normal games. Pretty much all Lee Sins will start on the red side and proceed to gank the nearest lane. So what I do is take my own red buff and immediately proceed to counter jungle the enemy by taking his blue buff and leaving a small creep behind. By the time the enemy has finished his red, ganked other lanes, and come back to either get his blue buff or give the buff to mid lane, he or she will have to kill the small creep and wait another 5 minutes for blue buff to respawn, in which the enemy mid lane will be severely crippled as you proceed to give blue buff to your own mid. Having blue buff is invaluable to mid because not only does it give significant cooldown reduction on spells, but also provides tons of mana regeneration that allows the mid lane champion to harass or push without worry. This is a sneaky way to get your mid lane to win without actually ganking. Other benefits to this route is that it does give get you closer to level 3 and allows you to pull off a delayed game to either top or bottom lane, which they may not expect. Now, the last pass that I tend to take with Lee Sin is when the chances of counter jungling are slim. In this case, I take my race first and then red buff so I can early gank and then rush wriggles and level 6. Remember that Lee Sin is all about doing well early game. I never run the standard cloth armor plus 5 pots and clear my entire jungle path because 1. Lee Sin does not need blue and 2. Playing passive early game by clearing your jungle will only lead to you being underfed and weaker as the game goes on. The purpose of Lee is to really put serious pressure on lanes and force passive play on the enemy's part so your teammates can farm well. For the most part, Lee Sin acts as an off tank late game, but if you find your teammates are low on damage, then you can build damage items on Lee as well. For builds, Lee's core items are Wriggles plus Boots early game in order to obtain the sustain and mobility that he needs. From there, you can choose to transition into three types of boots, Mercury Treads, Ninja Tabby, or Ionian Boots of Lucidity. Depending on your team comp, you can go several routes from here. If you need to deal damage but still be tanky, go Frozen Mala and Atmos. If you need more tankage over damage, go Warmogs and Atmos. If your team happens to really suck and you're doing well, going Trinity Force is not a bad idea. Other items to consider afterwards are Black Cleaver, Bloodthirster, Randuins, Last Whisper, and Force of Nature. Situational items are Thornmail and Quicksilver Sash. For skills, focus on maxing out Sonic Wave first and then your shield, getting one level in Tempest at level 4. Max Tempest last and be sure to get Dragon Dredge whenever you can. 
Thanks for watching part one of my jungle leasing guide. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and comment, and let me know what I can do to improve my next guide. In part two of my jungle leasing guide, I will be explaining different skill builds and how to gank properly with him. And until then, I wish you all the best of luck with leasing.